Introduction. It seems that everywhere we look these days, someone is trying to convince us that their way to get healthy is the best. Between fad diet trends, supplements, and products that claim to work miracles, the world can seem like an amazing place full of wondrous technology that can help us to shed weight fast. And choosing between options is often overwhelming and difficult, especially once you begin to unearth the gritty truth about many of these options. Scams abound. Chemicals and hormones can be altered in the body and cause terrible effects. And products that claim to work miracles can be harmful in the long run. So, who is there to trust when we want to begin a healthy lifestyle? The answer is simple. Nature. In nature, there is a natural balance that can be very delicate. If we veer away from natural practices and substitute things like healthy eating and exercise with pills and starvation, the obvious results will be detrimental to us. We were designed to enjoy a bountiful diet that is rich in specific things, healthy fats, vitamins, and minerals. That is where the paleo diet comes into play. Introduced during the 1970s by a man named Walter Vogtlin, the idea of eating only the foods that were consumed by our ancestors from the Paleolithic era has become immensely popular. When we stop ingesting foods that were introduced during the time hunting and gathering slowed down into farming, the idea is that we limit many starchy products and fatty meats and stick to the foods that are nutrient-rich and ideal to keep the body and gastrointestinal tract as happy as possible. He thought it would be a good way to influence modern people to eat in a healthier fashion. Vogtlin was a pioneer in this field, and his research inspired others to reach conclusions about the diet for themselves. Another doctor believed that our bodies were evolved for this type of diet. That is, to be eating the kinds of foods our hunter-gatherer ancestors were able to gain access to in their travels. We are naturally adept at digesting lean meats, fruits, vegetables, and nuts and seeds. In fact, they are incredibly good for us. The types of foods that become commonly and commercially available to us through farming, foods like grains, corn, which is technically a grain, and dairy products consumed in an abundance can cause the body many issues. Lactose intolerance, gluten intolerance, and other allergies abound from commercialized and common staple foods of this nature. Not to mention several of them are very starchy, which can make it difficult to lose weight. The paleo diet is great for those who are hoping to shed a few pounds, but more than that, it is a major lifestyle choice. It isn't just about losing weight, but about feeling great and making choices that are healthy for you and that make you feel good. It can be very stressful to know that the foods we are eating by choice are doing harm to our bodies. Even if we aren't consciously aware of that specific harm, we innately understand what is good for us and what is bad for us most of the time, and there will always be a weight on our shoulders when we are consuming foods that we know for sure are bad for us. While losing weight isn't the primary goal of the paleo diet, it is an incredible benefit. If you are used to the standard American diet, also known as the SAD diet around the world because of the pitiful lack of nutrients in the typical meals served when consuming processed, prepackaged meals, then chances are high that you are suffering physically from it in some way or will in the future. Processed foods are terribly unhealthy, as will be covered in a later video. So, cutting these bad foods out and making the choice to go paleo is a huge game changer. Your body and your mind will feel better than they have in years. All because of a simple switch. Going paleo isn't a fad diet trend where you're going to have to go out and get a journal to count every calorie you consume so you know whether or not you are doing it right. Although, to be truthful, there is some benefit to journaling if you want to hold yourself accountable to the choices you are making. More on this in a later video. Sure, if you are overeating and not getting enough exercise to burn the calories you consume, then calorie counting can be of great assistance. However, many people can take that practice to extremes and not consider the nutrients they may be missing out on when they are following fad diets. Going paleo is completely different. You don't have to get out a big complicated map to chart the way. You just have to take a step back and look at what our ancestors and think, well, they were able to achieve good physical health in a natural way. So can we. If going paleo sounds like a right choice for you, then look no further. This guide will help you get started on this rewarding journey to eating foods that were meant to be eaten the way they were meant to be eaten. No more of that sad nonsense. So let's get started. Why the Paleo Diet? You may be wondering, why go paleo? What's the difference between that and, say, keto or vegan or Atkins? The answer is beautiful in its simplicity. The Paleo Diet is unique in that it is not a diet so much as a mentality. It is a new way to look at life and a wonderful filter through which to make your food choices. Rather than saying, I can only eat this many carbs today because of my diet, you can say, 
I can eat a full meal, and it is going to be delicious. This is because unlike the ketogenic diet, where you are forced to cut carbs to a dangerous degree to the point where your body is practically in starvation mode so you lose weight quickly, you're simply funneling your food choices so that they are all of a healthy variety. You don't want to eat junk food, things loaded with excess salt and preservatives and who knows what kinds of hidden sugars. You want to eat the foods that are naturally loaded with the nutrients our bodies need in order to thrive. You want nature's diet. That's why the paleo diet came into being. The man who founded it wanted to influence everyone to eat the way our Paleolithic ancestors ate because it wasn't full of carcinogens and unknown risks. It was a clean, pure way to get your food so you were able to function through the harsh elements and survive. Some may argue that if the Paleo diet was so great, why didn't the Paleolithic era people live longer? The answer to that is simple. They lived in very dangerous conditions. They didn't have advanced medicine the way we do today. They were able to fight through diseases naturally that might have wiped us out because their immune systems had to be tough to weather the elements. If they had managed to gain access to the kinds of technology we have developed today, there's no telling what kind of world we would be living in now. In any event, the paleo diet is a natural way to keep the body balanced, keep the mind clear and alert, and provide us with the flexibility and nimbleness that we might have needed thousands of years ago in survival situations. We are lucky today that this kind of diet isn't as necessary as it was then. Can you imagine watching someone who was raised on a diet of fast food and processed, prepackaged meals to try to outrun a wild animal? Or better yet, fight and kill it with just their ingenuity and crude tools? Or even someone who was on a keto diet, putting their body through a lot just to shed a few pounds quickly. They might end up passing out without the proper amount of carbs in their system. Do you think people who are mistreating their bodies for convenience would win in a life or death situation? No way. The principle behind going paleo is simple. You want to operate at your maximum potential. The body runs on fuels, and that's simply the way it is. What we feed ourselves equates to the quality of the gasoline that we put in our cars. If we are eating fruits, vegetables, and meats regularly, that's a pretty standard type of gasoline. But if we are filling up on junk food and preservatives, high fructose corn syrup and prepackaged processed foods and fast food, we might as well be putting diesel in an engine that is supposed to run on unleaded. We need to try harder to treat our engines better before they break down. Going paleo is a great way to get rid of the negative foods that are impacting the body, even if it is in invisible ways. When we are eating foods that are unhealthy, it affects us in ways we sometimes don't realize until it is too late to change it. For example, eating foods high in salt and fat can start affecting your arteries. You don't feel it happening, and it can be a huge surprise until your doctor tells you that you need to work on your cholesterol. Worst case scenario, you have a heart attack before you even notice that anything has gone wrong. Heart disease is one of the leading killers in the United States of America, and it isn't difficult to see why. Fortunately, going paleo is simple, it's clear-cut, and it's easy to see why it's such a great choice. Instead of clogging arteries with fatty red meats and fat and sodium, it includes foods that are lean and contain healthy fats that help the heart not hurt it. And that should always be the goal when it comes to making choices that affect your body you want to help it, not hurt it. Because everything you do will come back to haunt you. If not now, then when you reach a higher age and your body really starts to feel the toll of your choices. Fortunately, it's never too late to improve your health and make changes that will benefit your body and mind. While it can be daunting at times to undertake any type of new lifestyle change, especially when it comes to deeply ingrained habits like eating, the fact remains that we want to better ourselves, our lives, and our health. And if going paleo is the way to get there, then there's no reason not to begin right away. In the next video, we will discuss some of the basics. So put your thinking caps on, because now is the time to figure out how to fit paleo into your life. What is the paleo diet and how does it work? This is the question probably burning the brightest on your mind right now. What in the world does going paleo mean exactly? What can you eat and what aren't you supposed to eat? And why are some things allowed while others aren't? Didn't dairy exist in the caveman days? Or did it? Well, to put it simply, the paleo diet is distinguished by the fact that cavemen didn't use salt or seasonings on their food. They ate what was available to them. They hunted their meat on foot, and they gathered their berries and nuts and seeds as they traveled. Most of the time, they did not live stationary lives. They had to follow the herd, so they were always on the move. Paleo isn't just a diet. It is a lifestyle. Eating paleo-approved foods and leading a sedentary lifestyle simply won't have the effects you are hoping for it to have. 
and you still want to be active and get a healthy amount of exercise every day. You want to get your heart rate up once in a while and know that you are using your body to its fullest potential. That isn't to say you should be unsafe about it. If you have restrictions and limitations, speak to your doctor about the types of exercises that are best for you. Paleolithic man did not putter around in a cave all day watching TV or playing on their phones. They got out and moved, and they ate what nature provided to them to make it through the elements. So no, it isn't accurate to say that the paleo diet is going to be a magic fix to your weight issues, because it isn't. Like any diet, it works best when coupled with other healthy habits and an active lifestyle. Anyway, let's get into the nitty-gritty of how this diet works. Here is a simple list of the foods that you should be eating on a paleo diet. These foods include lean meats. Think the kinds of animals you might hunt, particularly grass-eating animals such as deer, game meats, vegetables of all kinds, fruits of all kinds, fish, salmon particularly, anything you know that has a lot of omega-3s, seeds, nuts, and oils made from the seeds and nuts. Seems pretty simple, right? Now let's talk about the kind of foods you don't want to be eating. These include the following. Beans, lentils, peas, etc. Basically, no legumes of any kind. Dairy. Salt. Starches like potatoes. Fast food. Refined sugars. Junk food. Processed food. Grains. Yes, this includes bread. And that's about all there is to it. Seems simple, right? That's because it is. That is the beauty of going paleo, and ultimately its entire purpose. Simplify your life by simplifying the foods you eat. Take out all the things that are full of additives that are difficult for our bodies to process so that we are able to make better progress without anything unnecessary clouding our minds and clogging our arteries. It's as easy as that. The importance of developing healthy habits and ways to do so. Changing anything in our lives takes a lot of willpower. Not only do we need to have the drive to do it, but we must have the know-how and the ability to keep our goals in the forefront of our minds and take the small steps needed to get there every single day. If we aren't always working toward bettering ourselves and our lives, it is very easy to become stagnant and lose our grip on the things we are doing that take us forward and fall back on bad habits that will hold us back. While the paleo diet works in a simple way, the fact is that without discipline, it will not work for you. The benefits, of course, will remain, but if you aren't able to say no to your vices and begin to make changes in your life that you are able to stick with, there is really no point in going any further. Unless, that is, you want to learn how to change that. There are several great resources on helping you to change your habits and develop a better lifestyle. We all have great potentials we can work up to. And if we are always able to see the gold at the end of the rainbow, then it can be extremely easy to keep following the path to get there. A lot of people give up before they even begin because it can be very daunting and difficult to do a big overhaul of our lives. It is hard to change the things that we are used to. We become emotionally attached to our lifestyles and certain things that release endorphins in our bodies, like foods that have a high sugar or fat content or other things that are addicting for similar reasons. But we do not have to be addicted to bad foods and enable ourselves to make bad choices because of them. If we are going to manage our lives better and become the strongest versions of ourselves that we can possibly be, we need to hold ourselves accountable for shaping the habits that we develop to improve our lives. We can't blame anyone else for our health, especially once we reach a certain point in adulthood where every choice we make about our health comes down to the ways we manage our money and our time. There are some things in this world that are beyond us to control. We can let those sorts of things go, but we cannot let go of those things that are within our grasp. We just can't allow ourselves to change for the worse because that is the easier thing to do or give up before we even begin or before we have formed real, true new habits to replace the old ones. In most cases, the key to developing new habits is patience and persistence. We have to know what we want, keep our eyes on the prize, and just go for it without apologies and with no turning back. So what if your friends or other family members don't want to go paleo with you? Who cares if other people are around you making the same bad choices that you just vowed off? That doesn't give you permission to turn your back on your goal. Those people are making their own choices, which is perfectly fine for them. However, you have set a goal for yourself that you know will better your life, and you can't be swayed by peer pressure or enable yourself to go back to a vice and claim it's because everyone else is doing it. Have some self-respect and hold yourself accountable for the choices you are making. If you want to eat healthy, clean foods and enjoy the paleo lifestyle, you can do it alone or you can do it with the support of those around you. 
In either case, you have to be doing it for the right reasons. Do things for yourself, for your own betterment. If you are only doing it to lose weight or to impress others or to jump on a bandwagon, chances are high that it isn't going to be a lifestyle that sticks. It will be just another fleeting phase in your life, and you may be reminded later of the thing that you tried once but didn't follow through with. Remembering the things you don't do to the absolute best of your ability can be a stressful thing. We can feel shamed when we are reminded. We feel guilt for not treating our bodies as well as we know we should have. All those feelings can spiral into a pit of self-pity or depression that can sometimes lead to even worse choices. Avoid that. Work on making decisions for your health and sticking to them. If you don't, you will have a sense of stress because we should be able to stand proud and say we did the best. We should feel pride in knowing that even when we hit a roadblock or we had a temptation and fell off the wagon, we managed to pick ourselves up and keep heading in the right direction because the choices we make are important and we are important too. We deserve to live in good health, eat good foods that nourish our bodies, and be proud of ourselves for sticking with the choices we make. Easier said than done, though, right? Habits are difficult. They are neurological. They are psychological. If we have roadblocks that are preventing us from fully caring about ourselves and our choices and the impact that we have on the world around us, then those roadblocks will certainly show up and derail your efforts at developing a healthier lifestyle. So how do you avoid those types of roadblocks? What can we do to identify them and stop them in their tracks? First of all, it helps to really stop and think about the things that we are doing to help ourselves versus the things we are doing to hurt ourselves. Make a list if you have to. Think everything through carefully. Are you getting enough rest at night? Do you drink enough water? Do you exercise daily? Do you do cardio weekly? Are you keeping your living space in a clean, hygienic condition? Are you focusing on your mental health and clearing away toxic relationships so that they aren't cluttering up your life and making you doubt your own worth? All those things are actually very important to address if you are hoping to start making better choices for yourself and sticking with them. If you are constantly bogging yourself down with negativity, and you aren't putting your own mind, body, and health first and foremost, developing better habits is going to get very, very tricky. If need be, think about why it is that you aren't doing everything you want to be doing. Was there somebody in your life who told you that you shouldn't be concerned with yourself? Do you feel like you are worth a better life? If you suspect there may be a deeper-rooted issue when it comes to your ability to make changes in your life that will impact you positively, then don't despair. There are several resources available to those who want to sort through the reasons they do not want to make better personal choices or why they don't feel good enough. Some of those options include going to counseling, speaking with a life coach of some sort, or simply doing some specific meditations that will help to guide you toward the issue and find some resolution. Understanding yourself is the single greatest way to begin making life-altering changes that will really last. Holding yourself accountable to those choices is just as important. If something is important to you, you can't just let it go. You have to fight to hold on to it and make sure that you are taking charge of making the important thing a priority in your life. Nobody else is going to do that for you, and to be truthful, most people will make that more challenging. Everybody has their own opinions and needs, and they may even be making demands of you. All those things can be distracting when it comes to trying to get something accomplished. You have to have the confidence of knowing that the choices you make are important enough to you to follow through with no matter who might be in the room disagreeing or judging you, or simply living in their own habits without understanding how tempting those vices might be. Developing new habits can take anywhere from a week to a month, depending on how adamant you are about sticking with the new routine and how often you are able to practice it. The best way to begin to implement a new habit is to make it your priority and stick to it with every day at approximately the same time. Routines are something that humans seek out. These types of ritualistic behaviors are easy for us because we are programmed to seek order for our survival. If you can get your meal plans around and eat at approximately the same time every day, it is going to be that much easier for you to stick to this habit. If going paleo is something entirely new to you, it's best not to jump right into it. You should start by changing one habit at a time. For example, if you are completely addicted to refined sugars, try to wean yourself off those first and get yourself comfortable with the slight change before undergoing the larger one. That way, you are more comfortable during the transition and you don't lose your resolve. It is important to stay on track. That's why if you end up slipping and missing a day or eating something you know you shouldn't, you should correct yourself as soon as possible. Otherwise, you can easily fall back into the bad habit instead of strengthening the new one that you are trying to create. 
Don't start feeling sorry for yourself or angry or upset about it. Accept that it happened, that you are human, and that you can do better. Then do better. It's not impossible. It's a matter of making a choice and sticking with it no matter what. The most important thing about building a habit is to remember that it takes time. Don't think about how difficult it might be to go to a long period of time struggling not to eat things you know you shouldn't. Think about the days you have succeeded and focus on one day at a time. That is the most effective way to get your goal accomplished. Don't try and do the whole thing at once or get caught up in the big picture. Just think about the little choices you have to make day to day and make a conscious effort to make the right ones. The importance of accountability and how to use it when going paleo. As the previous video mentioned, building new habits can be tough, but it is always possible. It can be difficult, however, and many times we need a system to help us stay on track. Building a habit is one thing. Sticking with it is quite another. To make sure you don't fall off the wagon when it comes to developing your paleo lifestyle, you're going to want to take tremendous care to get back on the horse on those days where you might slip up and say, what will one time hurt? I've been doing so well. Sure, a one-time slip-up can be a nice indulgence, and in moderation, any unhealthy lifestyle choices you make may be less damaging than if you were making those poor choices all the time. But you do not want to get in the habit of excusing yourself for doing things that you know in your heart of hearts is going against a very specific goal or lifestyle that you have in mind for yourself. If you tell yourself it's okay to indulge once, you might want to indulge again later, and soon whatever self-control and discipline you would manage to summon will be lost. It's a slippery slope when it comes to staying true to a new lifestyle, and if you aren't willing to put in the work, you will never get the results you desire. However, if you are willing to hold yourself accountable, whether by journaling about your paleo journey or by making charts detailing your pitfalls and your success stories, you are that much closer to making it something so easy that you do it without even missing the way you once lived. The days of indulging in things that are bad for you will feel almost like a bad dream. It's like someone who has quit smoking and hasn't touched a cigarette in about 10 years will sometimes say it seems like a whole other lifetime ago, and they can't believe they ever did it in the first place. The same is true of going paleo. If you are willing to put in the time to make this work for you, someday you will look back on the bad choices you made for your health and feel horrified and perplexed at what you had been thinking all that time. Journaling can be a great tool. If you are writing down your victories and the things you have had a hard time with, you can make a plan to deal with those difficulties at a later time. Writing about your journey can help you understand what things might cause you to crave certain foods that you know are bad for you. That way, you can avoid triggering events and focus on making sure you remain in situations that allow you to make the healthiest choices possible for yourself. If you are craving something processed, for example, you can try the old bait and switch. Think about the thing you are craving and equate it to a healthier alternative. Maybe instead of eating a cheeseburger from your favorite fast food restaurant, you could try a leaner meat burger instead. You can easily find bread alternatives to create wraps out of lettuce. You hardly miss the bun. Bread alternatives come in all shapes and sizes. Flax seeds can make impressive alternatives to bread. There are also other gluten-free options that might work for you. Just make sure you are doing a good job at reading the labels to the foods you eat before you eat them so you don't end up making a mistake that could cause your body confusion. A good alternative to journaling about your diet is talking to friends and family members about it. Co-workers can also be beneficial to keep in the loop. Anyone in your life who might want to invite you out to places you will have a difficult time finding a healthy meal should be informed that your lifestyle has changed. That way, if they see you reaching for something you know you shouldn't have on a paleo diet, they will have the opportunity to ask you if that is something you are supposed to have and what your plans will be concerning your diet in the future. If writing things out and talking to your community to attempt to create a support group isn't enough, there's always the option of making little charts or checklists to keep yourself in line. These can easily be placed on your refrigerator door so you know you are working the best you can every single day towards your goals. For example, you might have a line with a box next to it for a check mark that says paleo meat or paleo vegetables or paleo fruits, maybe with a yes or no box. If you select a checkbox for no, Maybe you can have a line following that says why, or another line encouraging you to do better tomorrow. It is important not to punish yourself too severely for slipping up because it can be very easy to discourage yourself from ever picking the diet back up to try again. You don't want to traumatize yourself before you have even had the chance to succeed. A lot of us end up with an unhealthy mindset that tells us we aren't capable of achieving the things we set out to do, and the first time we make a mistake, 
It seems to confirm this silly suspicion in our minds and we feel sad and depressed about it and seem to continue to verify that negative information with more and more slip-ups. But if we forgive ourselves and move on, quickly correcting our paths and going back to where we started so we can keep going in the right direction, then before we know it, we will be living an authentic paleo lifestyle and there's no reason not to do that. It is within our power, even when our minds are against us and tell us that we have no control. We must prove that is not the case, especially to ourselves. Once we realize just how much power we have, then we will truly see the power of accountability. If we aren't always making excuses for ourselves and instead focus our attention on ways that we can improve and do things in better ways, then we will stop living the powerless type of lifestyle that leads us to ultimately decay and feel miserable all the time and start making the choices that allow us to feel powerful and confident, all the while knowing that we are capable of achieving the goals that we set out to achieve. And there is nothing more rewarding than that. Tips and Tricks to Going Paleo there are a lot of things that can help the paleo diet go more successfully for you than it would with just the simple advice of cutting out certain foods and hoping for the best. For example, did you know that eggs are paleo friendly? And that if you are able to eat the entire egg, you will have a good boost of protein? There's nothing horribly wrong with egg whites or yolks. And they are both things that our ancestors would have eaten during the Paleolithic era. Like most things in life, going paleo is easier if you are doing so with someone else. If you have a spouse or partner or friend who is willing to change their lifestyle with you and work on creating new and interesting meals that are both fun and sustaining, then more power to you. It can make it a lot easier to have a partner while undergoing this major lifestyle change. So if you would like to try and recruit someone else to try it with you, then go ahead. Better yet, maybe buy them a copy of this training as a resource to help you both stay on the same page, so to speak. Oh, the puns. Now, Try to keep in mind that there can be such a thing as too much fruit juice, as juicing fruits takes the fiber out of the fruit, so what you end up getting the majority of the time is a lot of natural sugar in one place. While it is still delicious, and it does have some vitamins to its merit, juicing can be a tricky business, so it might be better to look into ways to do so in a natural way if you find yourself craving something other than water or tea. Simply leaving some of the pulp in your juice can work wonders, so give that a try. It's okay to eat fruit on this diet, even though there are natural sugars in them. Just try not to go too overboard with them and it should be fine. They can be a great way to wean yourself off of processed foods and snacks that are ultimately very unhealthy and leave you feeling regretful rather than satiated. Also, instead of focusing on the things that you wish you had and really want, it's a good idea to find replacements for the things you crave rather than trying to use a lot of self-control to prevent yourself from giving in to temptations. There are great ways to replace things, such as the previous paragraph mentioned with replacing sugary desserts with natural, fruity kinds. Some people are very strict with their paleo diets and eat things the way they think the cavemen might have eaten them. This can be very limiting creatively in the kitchen. Try not to let yourself get closed into a box like that. You can have a lot of fun in the kitchen with the choices you do have at your disposal. Just think, if the Paleolithic man had access to the things we have today, Using the same ingredients, he would have been able to create some very delicious meals. In fact, he probably did to some degree have creativity with cooking. It is practically a survival mechanism to be able to do so. Speaking of the things our ancestors might have eaten, it is unlikely that the foods they ate had pesticides on them or were grown and nurtured on foods that had growth hormones in them. Do your best to try and weed out the ingredients that have needless chemicals in them. If you can afford to buy things organic, do so. It is a no-brainer to healthy eating to avoid things that are proven to contribute to cancer. Ultimately, we do not want to suffer in old age because of something that could easily be avoided. Isn't that the purpose of getting healthy in the first place? Going organic can help to cut down on the chemicals we put in our bodies that can cause issues later in life, so it's a good idea to consider it. Crockpots can be an amazing investment for anyone who is considering a paleo lifestyle. They make throwing meat and vegetables together into something savory and delicious a no-brainer. It's easy, it's affordable, and it's delicious. On top of that, during the summer months, a crock pot can help you prevent unnecessary heat in the house if you're cooking your food that way rather than baking or frying it. Another good idea if you're going paleo is to invest in soups. Soups are easy, they last a long time, and can be frozen and rethawed at a later time. Stews work the same way and can be great fallbacks in times of exhaustion. If you come home late and find yourself tempted to eat something quick and on the go, 
You can bypass the fast food restaurants and remember that you have a stew or a soup you can thaw and simply heat up. An instant meal. It's great to have that to fall back on so you don't end up indulging in things you know you don't actually want to eat. You can treat your body decadently and still have the same convenience. Actually, it can be more convenient because you find yourself saving money on food costs. Speaking of cooking, you may find it beneficial to plan your meals out and cook them in bulk during the week or weekend so you aren't struggling later with time and find yourself tempted to grab something convenient. While it can be troublesome to cook every single meal every single day, that can easily be remedied by cooking in advance. You can even freeze your meals and heat them up so they last longer. Like your very own microwave meals without the salt and other unhealthy preservatives and additives. There are a lot of ways to make cooking for yourself easy and convenient. All you have to do is find the time to do it and it will be done. Something you might object to but could benefit you in the long run is trying to eat as much of the animal as you physically are able to without getting sick. What this means is giving organ meats a chance. You don't want to find yourself objecting to some of the healthiest parts of the animal and wasting it. Our ancestors certainly wouldn't have done that. Organ meats can have a lot of health benefits and they might even be something that can grow on you as far as your tastes go. You never know until you try. Don't forget to keep hydrated during this time. Drinking water is incredibly important. It helps your muscles and cells and keeps your body running as smoothly as possible. Drink especially if you are doing a lot of exercise or if it is hot out and you find yourself getting sweaty for whatever reason. It's important to make sure you are maintaining all parts of your body, not just the food parts. The Paleo Man would have made sure to get as much exercise and water as possible. His lifestyle demanded it. There were no exceptions and no waste. It is a good type of lifestyle to emulate. One thing that may end up being very trying is that to go paleo, it can be important to read the labels on your foods so you aren't accidentally consuming things you don't want to consume. There are all kinds of things that manufacturers can sneak into their products. If you think something is just chicken, it might not just be chicken. Who knows what else has been added to it? Often, things are salted and have other preservatives added to them to extend their shelf life. That's why it can also be a good idea to get friendly with local farmers who raise their animals on very specific and healthy diets and sell them fresh to their customers. It's better to consume animals that have had a healthy diet because everything they ate becomes a part of them and then they become a part of us. You don't want to consume hormones by proxy. They have already been linked with many terrible afflictions and should not be trifled with. Another rewarding project you might enjoy is cultivating your own garden. It can save a bundle of money to have fresh fruits and vegetables right at your disposal without having to worry about what has been sprayed on the food you are eating or how they have been handled before you got to them. Make sure that you read about the safest practices of growing a garden so you are addressing all the possible needs it may have. They could be a little bit finicky, but overall, they are extremely satisfying and can have a generous yield. You can even garden in the city if you get creative enough with it. There are many resources that can help you learn just how to do that. One of the most important things to remember is that you should always have your eye on the prize. Think about what it is that has inspired you to go on a paleo diet and always have that reason close to your mind. Write it down somewhere you can see it all the time if you have to. Just do whatever you can to envision your goal and remind yourself why it is important that you continue to take the steps that need to be taken in order to achieve it. Everything you do will affect you eventually. The choices you make are things that you have to address. Maybe not now but in the future. And if you are making bad choices for convenience now, your conveniences might be taken away later as a result of those choices. And that is just a simple, unfortunate rule of life. However, everything does end up having a balance. And if you continue working towards your goals and holding yourself accountable, if you find yourself slipping up, everything will get back to normal. You don't have to beat yourself up for a cheat day. Just remind yourself that it is an indulgence and it isn't supposed to get used to. Remember that you have a better plan for your next meal and that it is the plan that will help you to achieve your goals indefinitely. Remember why you went paleo and never go back. The paleo lifestyle, bringing it all together with exercise. The one thing we know beyond the shadow of a doubt is that our paleolithic ancestors were active. They had no choice but to move their bodies and develop their muscles as they did their best to survive in difficult conditions and ensure that the ones they cared about most were able to eat and thrive. Without that dedication, none of us would be where we are today. Our species would be extinct. Fortunately, our ancestors had the will to move. They had a drive to survive. And that drive is part of us even today. 
What we must do is learn to channel that in new ways. We no longer wander through forests hunting and gathering as a necessary survival mechanism. We go to the grocery store. We navigate concrete jungles. We go to the gym if we think about it. But we aren't running around after animals to hunt them down to feed our families. We aren't moving most of the time the way our ancestors had to move. And that could be a real problem for our bodies. A paleo lifestyle goes beyond just dieting. We must make sure we are utilizing our bodies. Making conscious choices not to lay around and hibernate or watch television all day. If we aren't trying to be active, then going paleo in our diets is not likely to have the most profound effects on our health. If you have a specific image of what it means for your body to go paleo, just keep in mind that while eating better can help you shed some weight, it is not going to do anything to tone your muscles. Only exercise can do that. There are a lot of types of exercising our paleolithic ancestors might have participated in. It is safe to say that they would have done a fair amount of running, lifting, carrying, squatting, and climbing. All of those are natural occurrences in a survival situation. It is even possible that they would have done swimming as well. Just imagine how long it might have taken to walk around and follow a herd to a new location. Our bodies are built for movement, and if we aren't utilizing them for that purpose, it can be exceptionally challenging to stay in shape and live as healthy a lifestyle as possible. Fortunately, there are easy things you can do to stay in shape. Take a walk every day, for example. Do some stretches. Give yourself 20 minutes of cardio every few days. The hardest part about building a workout routine is getting started and sticking with it. But you can use the advice given in the videos about building habits to help you begin to get on track. There is nothing that can stop you from taking the steps you need to take for yourself to begin building a better life. All you have to do is care enough to make the commitment and follow through with it. Meal Planning for the Paleo Diet Meal planning is one of the most important things you can do, both for your diet to succeed and for your budget. This is because having a plan to work with can help you in so many ways. Instead of feeling flustered and confused about what to make for dinner because you don't have anything figured out yet, you can look right at your meal plan, get your ingredients around, and get your meals made and portioned out. This can help you stay on track without getting distracted by easy solutions and quick fixes that are ultimately very unhealthy. Some people have a hard time planning their meals out. They like to be spontaneous and their appetites can change, so they may find themselves reluctant to take the time to sit down and really work through the kind of foods they want to put into their meal plan. But a meal plan isn't meant to limit your freedom. In fact, if you use it right, it is supposed to help you do better and give you more options while saving you time and money. If you are saving money, you have a lot more ways to be creative, don't you think? To make your meal planning an easy and a fun experience, remember that you don't have to limit yourself. Think about the foods that you really like to eat and work those into your meal plan. That way, you aren't overwhelmed with the possibility of trying a new food or recipe every single day. That can be an overwhelming prospect. It is a lot of work. But if you are making sure you just think about things you feel comfortable with and that are familiar and dependable, then just keep those in mind while planning your meals. By all means, though, you can easily consult cookbooks and other resources for recipes if you are experimental and want to try something new. Maybe you can set aside one day a week for a new meal experience. It can be a day that you have planned to have leftovers from the night before so that if you don't end up liking what you made, you will have something to fall back on. Although a good rule of thumb, especially in Paleolithic times, was not to waste food. A good thing you should do before planning your meals out for the week is to check to see what ingredients you already have so that nothing you have already bought will go to waste. You want to make sure that your new diet is encouraging you to live a lifestyle free of waste and being careful about what you use and when you use it can be a great strategy. Don't let your fresh fruits and vegetables go to waste. Look into the shelf life of your fruits and vegetables and see what is the most likely to expire first and use that while it is fresh. Make those foods your priority. Also, don't be afraid to use leftovers when meal planning. In fact, being creative with them can help you save your money and make your meals for the week that much more whimsical. If you make a side that can be used in several different ways, such as a side one day or a topping another, then you are making sure that your food goes a long way and you are less likely to waste anything you buy. This practice can also help you begin to work on portion control so that you aren't overeating foods just because you know they are healthier for you than other types of foods might have been. One final tip for meal planning is to anticipate that there will be a time you just aren't feeling like cooking. Plan ahead for that. Maybe you can make a soup or a stew and have it in the freezer waiting for you for a time like that. 
Or maybe you can make double of something at the beginning of the week so you know you will have it later on when you are feeling exhausted and simply don't want to cook. Of course, for days like that, you can still throw things in a slow cooker and let that do most of the work for you. That is another good alternative for those days when cooking just doesn't sound appealing. Either way, make sure that you are being realistic when you are creating your meal plan so that you are able to follow through and feel good about it. Don't overdo it because you have big goals. Work with where you are at and slowly work on going above and beyond that. And do it in a realistic way. Otherwise, you may end up feeling stressed out and declare yourself a failure when you have simply overwhelmed yourself and need to take things a little more slowly. All of this is important but it isn't worth it to beat yourself up if you make a choice that you regret. Instead, just work hard not to make that choice next time. That way, you will start every meal with a clean slate, full of opportunities for you to make the healthiest choices possible. Sample recipes to get you started on your paleo journey. Breakfast recipe, paleo breakfast burritos. Ingredients, two paleo tortillas, two eggs, one red bell pepper, half a yellow onion, pepper to taste. Directions. Dice the red bell pepper and yellow onion. Use your preferred method to warm the paleo tortillas. You can either microwave them or warm them up for a few seconds on each side on a skillet heated to medium-low heat. Flip frequently until desired warmth is achieved. In a medium skillet, heat cooking spray over medium heat. Cook the diced bell peppers and the yellow onion together until onions are translucent and bell pepper soft. Crack the eggs into the pan and whisk together until scrambled and fully cooked, about four minutes. Salt and pepper to taste, then place in tortilla and serve warm. Lunch recipe. Paleo turkey lettuce wraps. Ingredients. Eight pieces deli turkey meat. Two large pieces of lettuce for the wrap. Salt and pepper to taste. One avocado sliced. One tomato diced or sliced, whatever you prefer. Mayo to taste. Sprigs of fresh basil to taste. Directions. Spread the lettuce leaves out as widely as you can. Spread your mayo and basil sprigs over the lettuce. Next, add the avocado. Sprinkle the tomato, then place the deli slices over the lettuce and roll them up. Serve immediately and enjoy cold. Dinner Recipe Paleo Slow Cooker Chicken Recipe Ingredients 2 boneless skinless chicken breasts 3 cups of vegetable stock Pepper to taste Directions Season your chicken with your preferred ingredients. In this recipe, simple pepper suffices. Next, place the chicken breasts and the vegetable stock in the slow cooker so that the chicken breast is covered by the stock. You can adjust as needed. Turn on the slow cooker and allow to cook until completed using the high setting. This should take approximately two and a half hours depending on your slow cooker. Dessert recipe, amazing peanut butter and banana smoothie with cacao nibs. Ingredients, two frozen bananas, two tablespoons of raw peanut butter, two cups of almond milk, one tablespoon of cacao nibs. Directions. First, blend the frozen bananas in your blender on high. This can also be done in a food processor, but should be transferred to the blender once completed. Add in the almond milk, then the raw peanut butter and cacao nibs. Blend an additional 30 seconds until smoothie is your desired consistency. You can also add ice cubes if you prefer a thicker consistency, but those should not be put in a food processor at all. When smoothie is your desired consistency, transfer to a glass and serve immediately. Conclusion. Many people find the idea of changing their lifestyle a daunting task, and truth be told, it really is. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication to make it work. But if you are willing to put forth the effort and really follow through on the choices you know will change your life for the better, there will be no stopping you. Adopting a paleo lifestyle may seem challenging at first, but truth be told, it can start to feel incredibly easy to really focus on making the choices we know for sure will help to lead us to a better life. The paleo diet is wonderful and simple, and with it you may end up finding a whole new lease on life. It is incredibly rewarding to be able to look at an unhealthy food that once held us in its grips and acknowledge that it was a vice and one we sincerely no longer crave. It is natural to fall off the wagon every once in a while. It can be hard to change a lot of things at once, which is why it is important to remember that we are not just going paleo for the look of it. We are doing it to make our lives better, to help our bodies function better, and to enhance our minds. It can bring about a wonderful change in attitude and the endorphins we receive from exercising and eating right will make it nearly impossible to get depressed. And this is so important. The most crucial thing about changing your lifestyle is that you have to remember to forgive yourself. Sure, we all make choices that we regret. We all do things we wish we hadn't done. 
We all treat ourselves and our bodies with less respect than we treat others at times, and that can be very sad to realize. But don't let your guilt and shame hold you back from reaching out to grab the life you want. You do deserve it, even if you keep telling yourself that you don't. Work on the issues that you identify as troublesome and understand the ways that keep you from going after the life you want. Once they are addressed, you are good to go. Our diets are a very important and personal thing. They are a huge part of who we are and many of us are incredibly attached to the foods we eat. We develop relationships with food. We develop memories around eating. And it can be scary and sad to begin to veer away from favorites and comforting things that we have become used to sharing with those we love. But the thing to remember is that we are not giving up on the things we love. We are loving ourselves enough to make healthy choices so we can live and love even longer than we were setting ourselves up to do before. Not only that, but whole new rituals can be made around your new diet and your new favorites. You can share them with family and friends and know that you are doing what needs to be done to stay with the ones you care about as long as possible. It is up to you to determine what your definition of success should be. Never let anyone else do that for you. Going paleo will help you to develop confidence and understand yourself better than ever. You have to face yourself and really push through any little thing that might hold you back before you can reach the top. And if you aren't willing to face yourself, then all you can ever really hope to do is to stumble upon situations that won't bring you down. Don't be the person who lets life happen to them. Take the power in your hand and carve life out for yourself. That's the way it was meant to be. Did our Paleolithic ancestors wait for animals to come to them? No way. They went out and found the herd, then followed where it led until they had everything they needed. Take their lead. They went out and took control of their lives. They identified their needs, and then, no matter how challenging it seemed to be, they went out and did what they had to do to survive. And because of that drive, the drive they passed down to each and every one of us, we are still on Earth. We are still living every day. Now do their memories the honor they deserve and live that life to the fullest while you still can. Going paleo will not fix everything that goes wrong in life, but it will certainly help you to be better prepared to face whatever may lie ahead. Eating clean and getting lean will not only help you to look and feel great, but it will also ensure that no matter what you do, you are giving it your best shot. And that is something that we and our ancestors can be very proud of. So, go out there and give it your all. There's no reason not to be your best self. Starting now.